Hello, I'm Carolyn Black Sotir, and welcome to Kaleidoscope, your guide to the arts in Hartford County. The arts unify communities, and here on Kaleidoscope, we keep you up to date on the county art scene, highlighting local artists and organizers who are working to bring all of us together, making Hartford County a better place to live and thrive. So, let's get started. In September, arts organizations across Harford County are partnering to create a spectacular week of events to enjoy and celebrate all forms of the arts. Joining me to tell us about the first ever Harford County Arts Week are Matthew Scales, Executive Director of Visit Harford, and Suzanne Zantop, Cultural Events Coordinator for Maryland Center for the Arts. Welcome to you both. I feel like it's a breaking story. It is. It's exciting. It is. Very yeah, exciting. The first ever. Exciting. So. What inspired, I mean, I've always thought Harford County has a lot going on, but what inspired this idea of dedicating an entire week to the arts? Well, I had a meeting with um, Angela Robertson of the Town of Bel Air's Cultural Arts Commission and with uh, Rebecca Jessup of the Haverty Grace oh, Arts sure. Collective. And together with our executive director, Bob Willenbrink, we were talking about all of the events that we had in common during the same period of time, including one of our biggest ones, the Plein Air Festival. And we decided that we needed to showcase everything that happens in Harford County and all of the wonderful groups that have been here for years and years plus all of the new ones that are coming on um, because the public's clamoring for it right okay and so obviously you you are a, a woman with lots of energy but it's a small organization so perhaps you need to have a partner in all of this because yes. there's a lot going on and so I guess Matthew that's where um, you came into the that's picture. where we stepped in yeah so they all came to my office and presented the idea and met with me um, I want to say it was a few months ago mm -hmm. and I loved it um, Hartford County has a lot of great arts up here. We have two state designated arts and entertainment districts, mm -hmm. one in Bel Air and one in Habitat Grace. Uh, there's a lot of great public art around the county. We also have a Hartford County Arts and Mural Trail, yeah. as well as our Barn Quill Trail. So we already have those experiences here. And so anything else we could do to support the arts community, we're on board with. Okay, so that's going to be part of Arts Week. But then, of yes. course, there's a lot of special events going on. Mm -hmm. I, I have to ask you, were you surprised by when you started, you know, contacting all these different arts organizations and, you know, uh, visual arts, we're talking about music, dance, all of that, that you thought, oh my gosh, we have so much going on here, maybe more than I you know, even realized. Yeah, well, I've worked in the arts in Hartford County since 1979, and I knew who a lot of the groups were. I knew the one big frustration for everyone is marketing their events. Right. So I knew that they would be on board with something that would bring recognition to them and their work. Right. And that's what we, the real impetus for this Arts Week was. Yeah. So that, and then going forward from here, that we will have familiarity with groups. And the groups are also in your backyard. I mean, they're all over Harford County yeah. from the northwestern part down to um, Aberdeen. So we've got everything for people that they'd be looking for. And the people have responded, the arts groups, once they understood what it was about, they were very receptive and the, um, the website's filling up, I think. Yeah, I think we're all, all oh, so over 20. Explain how that works. You say the website. So Matthew, so <coughs> how did it work to, to get in touch with all these arts organizations and get them on board? So it was really, do you want to take that well, one? Well, we, okay. we started out just by reaching out to the people that we knew mm -hmm. because we all know different people more intimately and we contacted Jessica Cleaver at Harford Cultural Arts Board and mm -hmm. asked her to put it in her newsletter so that we would have a uh, official looking uh, invitation for right. people and that's where it came from is just encouraging people over and over and over again to go to the website giving them a link and they can upload their own information so they really feel that they have ownership of what they're doing. So yeah going to the Visit Harford website when you go to submit your event and you want to make sure you check the box that it goes to the Harford oh. County Arts Week web page, similar model to our Harford County Restaurant Week, right? Where right. you have all the restaurants that are participating as part of Harford County Restaurant Week, same model. So, you know, I think it made sense. So it's, it you have your pretty, menu of, of arts <laughs> events, right? <laughs> it's pretty darn easy then. I mean, that's fantastic. Well, there are the dates, September 10th 
to the 18th, and they're going to be events, as you were saying, Suzanne, even in your backyard, I mean, all over the place, not just Harvey Grace and Bel Air, right. though there's going to be a lot going on there. So let's talk a little bit. I, I said there's going to be visual art. Let's talk about some of those specific Well, we events. know that on Tuesday at um, Ledoux Gardens in the morning, some of our plein air painters will be painting there so that the public can come and watch them paint. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that um, on uh, Sunday in Haverty Grace, there are, um, there's the waterfront. Um, waterfront Festival. Yeah, there's oh, also awesome. a performance of Rent at the State right. Theater in wow. Habit of Grace. So you have a mix of visual arts and performing arts. It's We have all forms of arts in, right. in Hartford County. You really do. And some of the festivals, as you said, like the Waterfront Festival happens to be this all coordinated at the same time. Correct? Correct. Am I right about yes, that? Yes, and they, they were going, they were already scheduled, some of them. And that's really what made us do this, is say, mm -hmm. we have all these events, why don't we publicize them as one, e one uh, umbrella event to showcase yeah, it really the makes, county's arts. It makes a lot of sense. Now, I know that you're going to get a lot of wonderful attendance from people locally here in Hartford County, but as a tourism person, are you hoping, too, that this will attract people from outside the county? For sure, yeah. So we're putting some of our marketing funds towards, you know, the Philadelphia, Harrisburg area. That's where, ah. you know, we bring down, you yeah. know, that's a very affluent market and people love arts up there as well. So using the appropriate outlets and channels to really get folks down here and spend, you know, spend the week, hopefully, mm -hmm. yeah. or at least a long weekend or to enjoy as many of the events as possible. Well, it's, it's such an uplifting event week for, for the arts and for one's spirit. And, you know, times are tough right now for a lot of people. But also, what is the economic impact of the arts? People often don't talk about that as much, that it can be a real um, driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It can have a great economic impact for the county. I don't have the specific numbers, but I right. know, you know, when people are coming here and they're staying the night, they're eating in our restaurants. Uh, the, they're going to the galleries and they're buying pub, um, art, public art, mm -hmm. and um, going to the state theater and seeing performances. All of those really contribute to our local economy, which helps the residents of Harford County as well because it helps lower your um, uh, property tax. <laughs> oh, so. yeah. this is a good thing. So <laughs> we've been showing some pictures. There's, you know, art galleries are going to be open. Um, the whole week kind of culminates then with the Bel Air Arts Festival. Is that right? That's kind of the final. Um, uh, yes. couple days, so yes. um, uh, lots to do. Now, if people want to find out about the list, which I guess it, it's changing, or, or things are being added mm -hmm. all the time, right? Exactly, what you said, yeah. Um, they can go online and do that? Yep, go to visitharford.com, and under things to do, you'll see a drop down, arts and cultural, and you'll see a subhead, Harford County Arts, we click that, and that full menu will appear, and it, it, it's, I think, what, over 20 events now? Oh, at least. Yeah. That's yes. fantastic. So in the little time we have left, what's been the response from the arts organizations about this? Because this is new. Well, for some of the arts organizations, it's the beginning of their program year. So they don't have anything really to, um, to oh. present to the public, but they started thinking creatively. And for instance, the Deer Creek Corral is opening uh, one of their rehearsals on Tuesday night up in um, Madonna. Okay. And they, anybody oh. who wants to come and see what, what is it like to, uh, to sing in a choral group, and uh, we, we look forward to having them join us. That's terrific. Well, I my hat off to both of you. I think this is such a great idea, and uh, I'm excited. I'm going to go online. I'm going to start checking the events that <laughs> I want to attend. But it's a great time of year to enjoy all that Hartford County has to offer, particularly in the arts. So thank you both for all that you're doing with this. Thank you. Thank you. We're brushing with excitement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul Lyon has spent most of his days living on his family's farm in Aberdeen. Some may know him as an art instructor from his years teaching at the local college. Others may know him from his many years selling pottery with his wife. Nowadays, he's living a quiet life making ceramic art that's inspired by nature and the textures found in our environment. We recently visited Paul at his home studio to watch creativity in action. So get ready to be inspired as we shine a light on artist Paul Lyon. Oh, I love working with my hands and with the earth. One of my things is, you know, I want to go to bed at night at the end of the day with my hands smelling like dirt. Sometimes it's just clay, but, but it, it's close enough for me. 
everything that we mine uh, or a potter uses, whether he digs it himself, is of the earth. It's very important to, to me to, to just be a part of Mother Nature. The mornings I wake up, I have my coffee, I look at my news feed, I meander down the driveway to the old dairy barn, which is my studio now, uh, which I set up in 1986. Um, and uh, I will check work from the day before and everything, and it's just my little spot. I don't want to hear what anybody else has to say or try to sell me anything. And it's just, it's a perfect little spot for me to get lost in time. Ceramics, boy, it, it can, it can be about anything. It can be political, it can be religious, it can be about social things. could be about just a nicely thrown thing that you enjoy. A simple thing that you enjoy, which is what I try to do. I try to make things that I would like to bring home or use myself. It's just about making a nice pot that's uh, well thought of and crafted well, and I have control of my materials, which uh, it's kind of dialed in, and I have everything working. Not that it always does work, of course not. But that, that's part of it, I think, is that you're always, every firing, every batch of work is hoping there's something a little more special about it, which is kind of just, it's not just doing a job to do a job, it's, it's to do better every time. The, the job at hand is where all my energies and thoughts and everything are going to. I used to tell my students that. I mean, don't make it just to make it. I can tell. I can tell if it's just made to be made. Uh, make it with conviction and love and, and, and your learned knowledge. There are so many different avenues to go down just in clay that, you know, one lifetime is really not enough to pursue everything. Uh, it's impossible. So there was all these trails to take, you know, and sometimes to take the trail that's not taken very often leads to the best places. You know, as, as with life in, in general, joints are only designed to last so long or do so many repetitive things for so many times, at least in my case, so that both hands have had carpal tunnel, which is these three fingers, and the nerve, which is the thumb and forefinger. Um, but that, that's uh, just part of, uh, part of working with, you know, your hands. I do find the uh, process of making, uh, working with clay um, meditative. Think of it a lot as a uh, huge jigsaw puzzle where all these little parts need to come together properly to get to the finished piece. When everything works out, it's satisfying. That piece will go to the sunlight where I can see it in natural light and everything has worked because not everything works, but, but it's, we get some that are just to me, a little more special. The time and the hours and the sweat and the pains are, are, are finally w worth it to, to get to that point. And it makes me happy. For a special shine a light feature during every kaleidoscope program when we return we'll be giving you a sneak peek of a very special art exhibit at harford community college featuring the works of prize-winning sculptor brent crothers stay tuned
Congratulations to all who received Fiscal Year 22 Independent Artist Mini Grants from the Harford County Cultural Arts Board. Congratulations to the Harford Arts Organizations that received COVID Recovery Grants from the Cultural Arts Board this past fiscal year. Harford County sculptor Brent Crothers sadly passed away in 2020. To honor his memory, his wife, Gina Pierleoni, created an exhibit featuring his artwork. Gina was unable to join me in the studio today, so she recorded a tour of the gallery space, sharing some of her husband's favorite pieces with us. Let's take a look at Brent Crothers' Searching for a History. Hi, I'm Gina Pierleoni, and I am standing in Searching for a History, an exhibit of work by my uh, recently deceased husband, Brent Crothers. We're at Harford Community College. Uh, all of the work that you see around me is his, and all of the work that's in the show is work that he made during our lives together. I love this piece. So this piece was created in uh, 1999. Brent had an idea, I mean, he loved wheels. So this is uh, re from the Reinventing the Wheels series. So he was really intrigued with the years changing from 1999 to 2000 and wanted to do uh, a piece with 2000 feet of recycled or repurposed in this case, copper wire. So it was an elaborate system of unwinding wires that had been used for other things and then rewinding them again to create this piece. Um, this one here is made out of uh, fire hoses he or a single fire hose and it's from a series called My Line is Old and um, he wasn't particularly interested in fire hoses but when someone gave him multiples of something he was compelled to make things out of them. Uh, spheres interested him. He had a, a, a passion for uh, circles and squares and triangles. This one's called Divine Circles. And you can see the type of wire it was made out of. Um, this is wire that would have ended up in the landfill or recycled or something. Um, he also, loved the practice of burning things uh, ritualistically and also the idea of sitting around a fire, telling stories, things like that. So in this piece, it is a solid ball. It's extremely heavy to lift, heavy for me to lift. Um, it was flipped upside down. Um, well, this part, I'm sorry, this part was immersed in water and the top of it was set on fire in order to uh, expose the copper wire. So this area, I wanted it to feel like a, a studio. I wanted people to walk around the corner and to feel like they could be in a place where Brent was. And so um, there are a couple of videos that um, talk about making the, uh, the cocoon piece, the Water Wars number three piece. Um, and then there's another video called Storytelling, which is also really, really important because it, it's him telling his story. And two of the things that are uh, important in terms of his story and in terms of the making of all of this and the playing around with all of these things is that he, he was not a reader. He, uh, he graduated without being able to read. And as he says in his, his video, he was able to recognize some words, but he couldn't string things together. He was so distracted that he wasn't able to do that. He knew it was important, but he got out of school and it was a real uh, handicap for him. Um, but he knew it was important and so he, um, he ended up in his mid twenties buying uh, almost 20 acres in the middle of the woods. And that was, that was a quiet place where he taught himself how to read. Um, and it was a place that we lived together for, for 30 years. But anyway, this, 
This area here is really important because it's hard to see how one gets to making these incredible pieces. And you know, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. This piece that doesn't look like a whole bunch of anything is a place that uh, nature made. In other words, the tree separated here at one of the marks of whatever year it was in this tree. And he was fascinated by uh, tree growth, how long it took to do things. He was fascinated by it. So this little piece was an idea that he had and eventually it led to a piece that was, you know, designed a little bit differently. This piece, love this piece, is called It's an Old Story. Again, fascinated by stories, and it is the tree telling its story. And sometimes it's shown closed. Uh, in this case, uh, I wanted to show it open because I think that, you know, I am essentially opening uh, this space, Brent's personal way of working and my life with him so that the public can better understand where all of these things come from. Bren Crothers' Searching for a History will be on display through September 7 at the Chesapeake Gallery at Harford Community College. The closing reception will be held Tuesday, September 6, from 4 to 6.30 p.m. There's more to come on Kaleidoscope, so don't go away. We will be right back. Now in its fourth year, the Upper Chesapeake Bay Pride Festival returns to Concord Point Lighthouse Park in Haverty Grace on Saturday, October 8th to celebrate the LGBTQ community and diversity in Harford and Cecil counties. Sponsor, vendor, and volunteer opportunities are still available. Go to ucbpride.com to find out more. Call for Artists. The 59th annual Haverty Grace Art Show will take place in two waterfront parks adjoined by a promenade in historic Haverty Grace on October 22nd and 23rd and will feature food, continuous live entertainment, and children's activities. Prospective exhibitors may apply online at hdgartshow.org no later than September 17th. Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. 
As the official county arts agency, the Hartford County Cultural Arts Board is the primary local resource for arts organizations, independent artists, and the audiences of Hartford County, Maryland. The board's mission is to preserve, enhance, and promote the culture of Hartford County, Maryland. The Hartford County Cultural Arts Board is now accepting applications to join their 15-member advisory board. Members serve a four-year term, volunteering their time to work independently and as part of a collaborative panel of advisors and ambassadors for the arts. Last year, the agency invested more than $175,000 into Hartford County through operating support, programmatic support, COVID recovery assistance, and grants directly to artists. A dedicated and engaged advisory board is critical to developing the arts throughout the entire community. Interested applicants can visit culturalartsboard.org to learn more. During the COVID-19 pandemic, few areas of the economy were harder hit than the arts. The arts industry is an economic catalyst, an industry that accelerates economic recovery. With tremendous support and historic investment from the state legislature, the creative sector in the state of Maryland can expect an additional $40 million in arts relief over the next 12 months. To learn how you can access this arts relief, stay connected to both the Maryland State Arts Council and Harford County's official county arts agency, the Harford County Cultural Arts Board. And that wraps up today's program. Thank you for watching Kaleidoscope, produced in partnership with the Cultural Arts Board of Harford County and aired exclusively on Harford TV. We hope you'll continue to tune in to Harford County's Arts Connection. For Kaleidoscope, I'm Carolyn Black-Sotier.